Good evening, everyone. How is everybody doing? Good evening. Good evening. We're doing good. Good evening. Yeah, good. How are you two doing? Good evening. Good evening. Wonderful. Happy Friday to everybody. Thank you, Prof. Happy Friday to you too. PGIF. Right. So I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, we will be starting here in the next minute whilst we're still allowing uh, folks in. So tonight's discussion, a very interesting one, uh, one that is dear to my heart when it comes to cybersecurity, because everything that we do hinges on a well-established uh, security architecture and design, right? So that kind of forms the backbone of everything that we do. And that is what we will be discussing tonight. So all you know, contributions, and comments are welcome. And then tonight we also pick two uh, winners. In addition, I think then after that we only have one slot left for the ten uh, scholarship that we were, we were that we are given, right? Uh, so we will be looking at that also tonight. And there has been something going on uh, in the Arithmetic uh, Cybersecurity Platform, the the group, like the group that we we have. And we are going to talk also briefly about that. I think this is about the second or third time uh, we've been having some malicious folks uh, trying to, you know, get into the group and uh, do all sort of, uh, you know, bad stuff. So we are beginning here shortly time now. Uh, and like I always say, I appreciate everybody's time for uh, showing up. It's Friday night. You know, uh, you could have been anywhere else, uh, but you choose to be here with us sharing uh, knowledge and also learning from each other and uh, promoting cybersecurity. Uh, and this month, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So uh, I encourage everybody to continuously share and promote cybersecurity, careers in cybersecurity and just awareness in general, right? So uh, we are going to begin. Tonight's topic is what is cybersecurity architecture and design? And uh, we are going to do justice to this as we move forward. And our 40% promotion is going to end on 28th, which is next week. Uh, so if you've not taken advantage of that, uh, please go ahead and do so. It applies to all uh, our courses that we are offering. And our internship slash uh, cybersecurity internship and workshop starts on the 28th. And PCI uh, new cohort starts on Monday. Uh, so. Uh, all information for all PCI folks, you are going to receive it over the weekend. And then also same thing uh, over the weekend, you're going to receive the information for the cybersecurity internship slash workshop. So I'm Dr. Emmanuel Ledu. Uh, if you are new to the Arrhythmus family, uh, I'm a former United States Army captain. I'm a QSA and the owner of a QSA company, uh, cybersecurity consultant firm Arrhythmus Inc. based out of New York. A former professor of University of Maryland Global Campus and CTC as well. And I'm the founder of Arithmetic Academy. And I love talking about cybersecurity and teaching cybersecurity. So we can talk about cybersecurity all day, right? So enough about me. Let's move forward into what we are going to be uh, discussing tonight. So tonight we are looking at uh, cybersecurity news and we are going to jump into uh, what is cybersecurity architecture and design. And we will look at careers in cybersecurity architecture and design. And then we are going to go into our winners for tonight. So hang on tight. And like I always say, uh, we try to ensure that you're going to get something uh, to put in your toolbox. So you are going to always add to your body of knowledge, uh, you know, sitting in this for an hour uh, and change, right? So we are going to jump into our cybersecurity uh, news for, for uh, tonight. But before we do, uh, we are going to look at, so Arrhythmus Academy is a partner. We, uh, we are partners, authorized partners of Comtia. And what are you going to get out of that? So everybody within the Arrhythmus family, not only to our students, but if you join CyberChat, you are part of the WhatsApp group uh, and part of the family in general, you're on our email list. Uh, we have a 20% discount when it comes to buying vouchers. And the 20% discount is for the schools. So mostly the schools will give you 10%. We don't think it like we don't think anything. We just give the whole total twenty percent to uh, all our students and everybody within the Arrhythmus family. 
So if you are planning on taking any uh, Comtia uh, certifications and you want the discount of 20%, uh, please contact us and we will purchase the, the voucher on your behalf. So we don't have the vouchers in house. We have to purchase uh, through our partner uh, account and they'll give us the 20% discount and we give you the voucher, right? So with that, we are also going to talk about C, uh, CE credits, right? So the 20% uh, discount is what uh, just announced. And for your continuous education points for CompTIA and other uh, certifications, so when you write the certification exam the first time, you don't have to, you have the option of not writing it again, but just submitting continuous uh, educational points and one way of getting cont continuous educational points is attending uh, webinars like this one. So you can take screenshots of this and use that uh, for your continuous education points. So some students and some uh, folks from the in the Arrhythmus family, they've done that and they've been able to get recertified uh, with the Accomptia Security Plus and other certifications, right? So this is how you do it. If you go to the Accomptia website, you go, you see add CEUs. And with the C, you just click on that, and the next page, you can start what you can submit towards your C, CEUs uh, is what is listed on here. So uh, everything, name of the webinar and all that hours, you can put it on there. Also, if you watch, if you 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 come to the live session or you watch the YouTube uh, recordings that we post on there, you will still be able to use that also to come towards the points. Right? So you don't have to rewrite the exam. Uh, you can you know use these points to be able to. Uh, get recertified, right? So that is a way, and you can do this for all other certifications also as well. So for anybody new to uh, the family, we have a big WhatsApp group, uh, cybersecurity WhatsApp group. Uh, we have one for also PCI. So this is a general cybersecurity one. We are almost 800 and something. Uh, you can join that group, but uh, there's been, you know, uh, some malicious folks who have just jumped in there. And we are going to discuss how to protect yourself in general uh, from some, some uh, WhatsApp attacks. Right. That is going to be our cybersecurity news for today. So the WhatsApp group, we are going to post the link uh, in the chat uh, as we are going on or whilst, once we are done and you'll be able to join the group using that link. Right. So everything that we are doing within the Arrhythmus family, it is posted uh, in there. So, you know, webinars like this one and other information, you know, uh, security reports that are coming up, we post everything, all of it in there so you have access to that if you join the group and then also if you are on our email list uh, you're obviously also going to get that but the whatsapp group we have interesting discussions going on also on there as well and then on our youtube channel everything that we are doing here today will be posted uh, tonight will be posted on our youtube channel so all cyber chats are posted on our youtube channel so uh, please subscribe to the youtube to the youtube channel so even if you don't get the link to join the live session you can watch it live on youtube as well Right. And then also help uh, spread the word, you know, have uh, other family members also gain from the knowledge that is being spread around every Friday uh, during cyber chats. So with that, we are going to move into what is going on within our WhatsApp platform, right? So uh, just a little back, background. Uh, for, so for WhatsApp, uh, if you have a group, right, uh, everybody can see everybody's number. It's not only admin who will be able to see or uh, who is able to see or have access to everybody on in the group. I think that is maybe uh, a downside of like WhatsApp groups, uh, which maybe probably WhatsApp will catch up uh, to this and kind of rec uh, rectify it. So because of that, right, if there is a malicious actor or somebody with some bad intentions, if they get into a group, what they do is they can target anybody within the group and what they, like how do they target people within the group, right? Uh, so for uh, when we talked about social engineering, I think some couple of weeks ago, uh, for attackers who are trying to, or scammers, uh, what they use is one of the key things they use is familiarity. So if they just call you out of the blue and they say, hey, uh, I send you some pin, give that pin to me, you're not going to mind it, right? But if they say something that you are familiar with, like, oh, we are all part of the Arrhythmus group, or, you know, I'm admin or I'm from Arrhythmus, and you are in the arithmetic group, we want to verify something, or we are doing some program, we are sending you a pin, right? They have some uh, familiarity, authority uh, in that space, right? So just uh, this week and some previous, I think last year we had a similar problem. So we have 
you know, some people are able to get, it's an open group. So some people are able to get into the group, unfortunately. And what they do is they call uh, members of the arrhythmist group. And they sometimes, they even, like, they will tell you there's a prayer meeting going on. And we are sending you a pin for you, for you to join. And what they do actually is when they, like, when they are doing this scam, this is how they do it. They will have because they have your number right they will install whatsapp on a different number or like on a different phone and they will input your number like they'll put your number in there so when they call you and they are talking about you know whatever story that they are telling you they will send you a pin because they are trying to you know uh set up a, like a whatsapp with your number so they'll send you a pin and as they are talking to you they'll tell you oh, we just sent you a pin confirm uh, just to confirm that you're part of the group and there are scammers going around and, you know, scammers telling you there are scammers going around. And if you give them the pin, they'll take over your WhatsApp, right? And then what they do is if they take over your WhatsApp, you know, it's easy. You can also uh, re-enter your number into WhatsApp and take over your number because you have the SIM card and the pin is going to come to you. But it doesn't work. Like what they do is after they've taken over your WhatsApp, they will go through the same process, uh, try to set it up on a different phone, and then because the uh, the pin is going to come to you again, they will type in the wrong pin, you know, a couple of times and WhatsApp will block your number for 12 hours. So now they have your WhatsApp on it on one phone. They entered wrong, wrong pin in another phone for the same WhatsApp takeover and you've been blocked. So even, even though you have the SIM, when you try to take over your WhatsApp, uh, it is not. It is going to tell you you can only do that after twelve hours, and if you don't reset it or take over after the twelve hours, they will continue that cycle and then you know keep uh, holding on to your WhatsApp. And what they do is, if you you are you've been backing up your WhatsApp, they have access to most of the conversations that you've had, so they will start reaching out to family and friends, asking them for money and all sort of things, uh, pretending to be you, right? So there is a way that you can actually prevent this. It's easy. And what I want to let everybody know is Arrhythmus is not going to call you and ask you for any pin. There is nothing. Uh, if you want to call, like if you receive any such calls, uh, ignore it. We are not going to call you and ask you to for a pin that we sent you and none of that. Right. So uh, please ignore all that. I think last time they got somebody with a prayer meeting. I don't know how that happened. Arrhythmus, we don't do a prayer meeting. We are not a church. They call the person and say, we are, your Arrhythmus organized a prayer meeting tonight. So we are sending you a pin, please confirm. And the person confirmed after they took over the person's website. That was when we, he reached out to us, called us directly and was asking, yeah, this is what happened. So what should I do about it? You know, and I don't know why you wait after the fact, but uh, this is just to let everybody know. So this is our own news and what is happening uh, in our own community or like in our group that we have, right? So uh, we are going to, look at how to prevent or protect ourselves from this, right? So uh, we will jump straight into it. Now, WhatsApp has a two-factor uh, authentication or two-step verification uh, that you can use to protect yourself from such attacks. And everybody can do this. Uh, you can go to your account, you know, and then you will uh, click on your two uh, your two-step verification and once you know you are able to get to this page, what you do is you are going to enable your two-step verification and it will ask you for a PIN, right? It will ask you for a six, six digits PIN. And that PIN is something that only you should know. So if you type in the PIN, it will ask you to confirm. And once you confirm, you click on next, you should be good to go. Now, anytime somebody wants to take over your WhatsApp, so let's say they called you that there's a prayer meeting and you gave them the pin, right? They sent you some pin, you gave them the pin. Now, when they try to take over your WhatsApp, they will put in the pin, everything will be fine, but then they have to also put in the pin that you set up yourself, which they wouldn't know, and they can't call you back and ask you for this pin, so they wouldn't be successful in taking over your WhatsApp, right? So even if you forgot, you, you were like distracted and you gave them the pin, you have this, you know, second step for authentication or for verification. So they wouldn't be able to take over your WhatsApp. This is very easy for everybody to set up. So if you've not set up this already uh, on your phone, on your WhatsApp application, please do so, right? Uh, because then you're going to save yourself a lot of headache 
uh, from all these people trying to perpetrate these scams, right? So with that, we are going to jump into our topic for tonight. Now, uh, I know there are some, uh, I think like there were like a couple of us, uh, not me, like I've not received any of these, uh, but like a couple of, it, it was on the, on the platform. I think it began like three days ago and they were just randomly calling. And then also what they did was they took over one of the students WhatsApp and now they are using that to call other students or like other group members also, which is very sad, right? So uh, please just be on the lookout. Uh, don't fall for these uh, scams. And I mean, like, they, like this is too easy if, you know, like just to spot you know, what they are doing. So uh, please don't fall for it. Yes, uh, attention to detail, you know, and be vigilant. That is all that I'll say. And this is not just from what is happening here. You can have it if you are in a, another group. Uh, they can also do the same thing. So if you set up the two factor, uh, the two step verification, you should be good, right? Now we are moving into our topic for tonight. So cybersecurity architecture and design, right? Uh, cybersecurity and architecture and design, uh, it forms both security and uh, cybersecurity architecture and design together, right? Uh, forms a very big or forms the backbone of cybersecurity. So everything that an organization would do for security, uh, this is where it all begins, right? Uh, just like if you want to build a house, you want to build a bridge, anything that you want to build on the construction side, uh, you first have to, you know, have the architecture uh, design or have an architect do the design and everything for you before you'll be able to build, right? If you're a passing by and you saw Dr. Edu, laying bricks and you ask, hey, so Dr. Edu, what are you building? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm just, you know, stacking up the bricks to see what is going to come out of it. Uh, you probably think Dr. Edu is going nuts, right? You have to have some sort of, you know, uh, plan and your plan will come from the architecture and design that you have already for the building or for the bridge or whatever you are building, right? So. Uh, the picture that you see in here is what we typically on the building side, this is what we will see for the design. And so we are going to look at it from the building perspective, what is architecture? And then we will look at it from security or uh, IT perspective, what is architecture and design? So for uh, architecture in terms of building and construction uh, is an act and it's a technique that we use for designing and building uh, our structures. And it is separate like that is different from uh, like the construction aspect of the bridge or the house or whatever we are trying to build right the design and uh, the the architecture uh, portion of the building uh, is you know uh, different from how we are actually going to do the construction right but the construction is informed by the design and the architecture right so why do we have this and how long has this been in place uh, since, you know, time immemorial, right? So uh, the practice of architecture, uh, we do that to enforce two main goals. So the beauty of our building, the beauty of the bridge, the beauty of whatever we are building, and then also the practicality of it, right? Uh, is it, so if you are building a bridge, we design it very well, it's very nice to the eye. Uh, will it be able to hold all the tracks that will be, you know, using that bridge? Right, so we have to look at the usability or how well it's going to be able to sustain uh, the purpose for which it was created. And then also, you know, we're not gonna build any ugly bridge. It has to be a nice bridge, right? Uh, so that is part of development and making sure our cities are looking nice. So the buildings that we have, if you come to New York, all these skyscrapers, they could have just built it like in a box or like in just some straight form with no design, with no, uh, style, you know, in it, but style is also part of it. But we don't have to sacrifice uh, usability in terms of if it is very stylish, but then people are, you know, in the building and the uh, uh, walls are collapsing and the building is unsustainable, then there is no use, right? So for architecture, we are looking at the beauty of it and then also the use, you know, are we able to use it? Is it effective? as we want it. So that is for construction and building. So 
you see a very nice building here, right? Whoever designed it, uh, they're really, you know, good architects uh, because it's a nice building. And to pull this off in terms of construction, that is a different, you know, subject matter uh, for a different day, right? But this is a very uh, nice design. Uh, you have to unmute mute everyone. Okay. All right. So, and then we are going to look at another one. Another one, you know, like pretty, uh, pretty solid. Uh, and the picture angle is also really good. So all these, uh, they were in somebody's head before it actually became a building, right? As an idea in somebody's head before it became a building. And the reason why I'm saying this is I'm building a case, right? So everything that you see, this was an idea in somebody's head before it became the building that you see, right? So as an architect or in architecture, uh, Architects, they use their imagination, their Im imagination uh, for the design and also uh, with their technical expertise, as they are doing the design, they're also looking at uh, the practicality of it or how sustainable it will be able to function, right? So all these were ideas or concepts, keyword concepts in people's head, right? That, and when we do the architecture and the design, and then we have engineers actually do the building, then we get this, right? So uh, with that, we are going to move into uh, architecture as we see it in information security. So in information security or in IT in general, uh, when we talk about cybersecurity architecture and design, and design uh, we are referring to a fundamental, the fundamental concepts that we use in the field of cybersecurity. And it, it includes planning, organizing, uh, implementing of security measures to protect our IT assets, right? So be it digital systems, data, uh, network from, we are trying to protect it from uh, cyber threats and also from malicious actors, right? So I kept saying uh, that this, the, the buildings we are looking at in terms of architecture and design, it was an idea in somebody's head. It was a concept in somebody's head. Now we can, you know, uh, bring the same, we can say the same thing for uh, architecture and design in the IT space also as well. So it is also, they are concepts. Service security architecture uh, is a bunch of concepts that we use in building uh, or coming up with uh, the security program for a company, right? Or the whole entire uh, setup of the security uh, of a company, right? And we are going to break it down and look at the different aspects of it. And design, architecture and design, they are two different things. Right, we keep like they go hand in hand, so we kind of uh, put it together. Now, in very simple and easy terms, uh, I think before we jump into that, maybe I will have somebody, uh, maybe two people try to break it down: architecture and design. What is the difference between the two? Before we look at it uh, as a group, anybody want to give it a shot? Cyber security, architecture, and design. What is the difference between the two? <laughs> yeah, Samuel, go ahead. Or oh, you just unmuted yourself. Um, yeah, my name is Samuel Solomon. How are you guys doing? Um, good, good, good. Um, from what I'm thinking, I think architecture is basically you you're building, it's like building a house from ground up. And um basically you're just starting everything from like the 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 bottom, like everything is starting from the bottom all the way to building the house. Designing is basically the house has been built. Now you have to like repaint the, you have to repaint the rooms. You have to um, paint, paint in the rooms. Um, let's say, let, let's say um, what type of um, bathtub you're going to use, like the different things that you're going to use. But the architecture is basically you're, you're building it from the stud. You're building it from ground up the design part is making sure that after you're done building the cybersecurity or whatever you're doing, it's uh, making it look um, making it look nice, nice and clean. So that's what I'm thinking of it. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, fine. Go ahead. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Good evening. This is Divine from Boston. Um, in my own little understanding, I think the difference will be between uh, implementation and concept 
the way I see it, architecture is more the conceptual phase, and then design will be uh, the strategies with which we can implement that concept. So one will be one will be the concept, and the other one, the design will be the implementation. I hope I'm not wrong. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Divine. Uh, okay. Tunde, go, go. go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Good evening. So uh, in summary, what I think is that the architecture will be the big picture, the high level or the macro, right? And um, the design will be the details or the micro, how we implement the big picture. That is what I believe it is. Okay. Thank you, Tunde. Uh, Brian. Can I continue? Oh, sorry. Yes, um, the architecture, I think of it as him doing all the mathematical parts of, okay, I know what we have to build, so let's math this out first. Let's get the calculations all together. And then the design part is putting those calculations, the design knows that the architect has done the calculations. Now he's piecing the calculations together to build what uh, build build the system out, and then from there, that's when it goes to the engineering part where they actually put all the the actual pieces together to that. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, great input, uh, Susanna. Please go ahead. A little bit of old, so pardon me. So, the architecture will be will embody like the foundation, the blueprint and everything. And once it's set, the design will manifest the blueprint and maintain the blueprint. So that's what I think. <laughs> okay, Sorry. thank you. Uh, thank you for your input. Uh, Kwabena, please go ahead. I would say that I was, um, the architecture is more of the, the plan, the idea, the idea, the plan, to, to put up the structure, right? Whereby um, the uh, design is um, how to implement it after putting up the structure, right? Um, how to how to implement it or how to make sure that the architecture plan is, is set up or it's implemented. Or if you're building like the, if you, just like you are building a house, the idea, to build a house, like to draw on the board or on the paper plan, and then you put in the walls, put in the roof, everything to complete the idea or the plan. That's the difference. Okay, thank you, uh, Papa. So, uh, can I say something? This old one. Okay. All right. Uh, I just wanted to mute everybody. I couldn't see where that sound was coming from. So uh, please go ahead. Like who who wanted to speak? All Hi, right. Dr. Du. Hey, this, is, uh, this is Jamil. Um, okay, go ahead, Jamil. Yeah, I'm taking a, a long shot here, but in my mind, I'm thinking the architecture is um, they're building from what is actually needed for that company. Hmm? The, 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 the bare bones of it, the skeleton of it, what they need to, to get the, the, the job done and then the designer comes in and implements how they want to put it together like it's, it's going to be segment certain parts we segment and they're going to station you know whatever it is how are they going to station it great uh thanks felix felix go ahead okay if you have a system the architecture will be the way you organize the computer system. And the design will be the decisions you make about that system. Okay. Thank you. Can for I your say input, something? Alex. Uh, please hold one. Uh, please raise your virtual hand, right? That way, like, it's easy for us to go down the list. Uh, so I think next in line is say, Magic. Please go ahead, Sir Magic. Thank you, Dr. Edu. Uh, just about one minute. Uh, architecture is just talking about the overall framework. As the building that you show to us, 
like the picture that we, we, we saw right now, that is what architecture looks like in a technical field. When you talk about the architecture, it's when the whole thing has been done completely in a 3D drawing that you can see and you can know that how the thing looks like. But when you talk about the design, we are talking about the detailed implementation. What are the things that they put in place or what are the things that they are going to do to bring that artifact or artifact that we saw on the picture? The thing that they put together before they had that picture over there you showed to us, those comes under what is called design. And then the architecture is just about the whole overall, as my brothers were just saying, the whole thing that we saw. So when it comes to cybersecurity, that is how it's going to be implemented over there. Okay, okay great. Great. Thanks. So I think there are a couple of other hands up. Uh, we Please keep it brief. That way we can move on as soon as possible. Go ahead, uh, Awini. Thank you, Doc. Um, the design and uh, uh, architectural design uh, in information security has to do with the controls and the safeguards that are implemented in information systems. And this gives a lot of credence to the trial, that is confidentiality, integrity, and availability and how these things are going to be used to protect data that are used to process and store. And then to ensure that the, the, the people, technology and processes aspect are all meeting the confidentiality and then integrity and availability aspect of the process. So design uh, architecture is the framework and the design is the details within the framework as to how this is going to be achieved. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, we move on to, I think, next in line is uh, Ransford. Please go ahead, Ransford. Oh, thank you, Dr. Edu. So uh, quickly, what I feel uh, the main difference between the architecture and the design is uh, I want to see the architecture like uh, a blueprint or a picture of the project. And then the, the design will be the process, connecting the dots to actualize it. Yeah. Pretty much like what some other people have already said, which is like more of implementation. So that's my contribution. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I think there are a couple of, so like the hands are getting more. I think we are going to hold off on here and then move forward. We will we'll still give everybody the, the chance to speak. Uh, so let's jump into uh, the architecture and design part of this. So uh, almost like a summary of what everybody said is right uh, in line with what we are going to be looking at here shortly. So uh, these concepts, architecture and design, uh, like I keep saying, is, is the backbone uh, for everything that we do in security. And they are concepts, right? Uh, for most, uh, especially for your architecture aspect, uh, concepts, and then for design, we are going to look at exactly what goes into design. So what is uh, cybersecurity architecture, right? One is a high level, two strategic uh, planning and framework that uh, outlines how the organization is going to position itself uh, overall in terms of security of its infrastructure, and then also how to protect the components uh, within the organization against malicious actors or against threats, uh, cyber threats that are out there, right? So what you have to know is, at the architecture portion of what we do uh, is concepts that we are using, uh, concepts that we are going to implement uh, to really build or come up with a structure for how we are going to build the security uh, of the whole entire organization, right? So the goal for cyber security architecture or information security architecture is to create a structured and an organized uh, security framework Right, that aligns with organizational keyword, organizational uh, objectives, and also uh, it, it can effectively mitigate the risks that uh, it is supposed to mitigate. So, when we started the discussion, when we are looking at building uh, architecture, right, for if you are, we are in the construction uh, side of the house, uh, the goal for architecture or uh, for your 
uh, architectural, you know, stuff that you are doing. The goal is to make sure it is nice. Uh, and then two, usability, right? So same thing here. Uh, we are creating a security uh, program for the organization or like the security framework, you know, uh, which we are going to use to build the security of the organization. Now, it has to be two goals still here. Uh, it has to be nice. So nice being what uh, we are going to make sure it is following the organizational objectives, right? Uh, in terms of the the business governance of the company, right? So what their risk appetite is, how much money they have to spend on this, uh, it's directly in line with what they are doing. And then also it has to be effective, right? So we are going to look at some of the key uh, areas in terms of uh, the concepts that we use for architecture. So the goal uh, of architecture or architecture itself is high level uh, conceptual, you know, ideas that we put together to create the framework for what we are going to use to build our company's uh, cybersecurity program, the overall program, uh, and to be able to use that to create like a good uh, security program for the company. Now, some of the key components of cybersecurity architecture includes security framework. So that we are talking about uh, the concept that we are going to put together is what is going to be to create what is what is going to create the security framework that we will be using, right? And then uh, security components, risk assessment, risk assessment, and security policies. So when we talk about the security framework, uh, the security framework is the overarching strategy, policies, and guidelines that we are going to be using, right? So think of uh, framework uh, as just like we saw in the building. Uh, when we have that, you know, an architect out of the conceptual idea in his or her head, you know, comes up with a sketch of how they think the building should be, right? Uh, they've just, that is kind of laying out the framework. Now, even for them, more things will go into that to make the framework very uh, holistic, right? And so uh, still here, we are looking at security components, right? So identifying the various security components within your IT setup, right? So. Uh, what components do we have? Firewalls, intrusion detection systems, uh, what type of uh, software and hardware are we going to use within this organization? So we mentioned organizational objectives, right? If your company is a retail company, uh, what components are they going to be using? If your company is a law firm, what components are they going to be using? What software are they going to be using? So for a retail company and uh, a law firm, uh, it's going to be different architectures that we are going to come up with based on the type of components they are using. We can use the same concepts, but the components are going to inform us how we are actually going to, you know, come up with our sketch of which, what has to be where and how we are going to uh, be protecting each and sing, uh, each, you know, one of these uh, components. And then we move into risk assessment, which cuts across regardless of which industry you are working with in terms of your architecture, right? Uh, Risk assessment you have to do wherever you find yourself. Uh, so risk assessment, simply evaluating uh, potential vulnerabilities or like the potential risks uh, that might occur within that industry, within your organization, uh, or that might threaten uh, organizational data assets uh, and data, right? So uh, we can dive into risk assessment and go deep into it, but generally risk assessment is part of your design, of your architecture as well, right? And then security policies, so security policies, we saw uh, with the security framework, uh, we listed security policies also here as well. Now security policies on its own uh, is the baseline, like uh, not baseline, uh, because when we get into security documentation, uh, you have to be careful of your, uh, what, how the terms and, you know, words that you are using, because baseline is also a document on its own. So uh, if I say baseline, I'm saying baseline in, in, the, in, in the idea of a baseline, not the actual document. Right. So for uh, our for security policies, they are what will set forth the security governance of the company. Right. Everything within your company starts with governance. So even with your architecture, it should start with governance. Because governance, uh, first thing that we do in governance is to set policies. So security policies will establish the rules and regulations governing how security measures should be applied and, and enforced within the company. 
So uh, all those security uh, policies are, are, you know, at the bottom of the list. It doesn't mean it's supposed to be the last thing that we do, right? It's supposed to be the first thing that we like we do actually, and then we will go through uh, still simultaneously, or you know, at the same time, uh, side by side, looking at uh, security components and then doing security assessment on our components and our whole entire setup, right? And then also uh, being able to come up with the overall action strategy, right? So when we 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 talk about uh, security architecture. What should come to mind uh, should be strategy, right? So when, you know, for our building, you know, examples that we've been using, uh, your architectural drawings will look like this, right? For security, your architectural drawings will look like this. So kind of similar, but not really, right? So uh, this is a security uh, architecture reference from Microsoft. Right, uh, so you can borrow from this also for your security architecture purposes. And uh, when you like this is if your company probably is starting from scratch, right? We need to build a program for them, uh, and uh, we have you know uh, components, we have everything in place. Uh, our security archi uh, architects they will go through the designing portion of it. You know, uh, they they will go through the architect portion of it, right? Coming up with their drawings and what needs to be where and try to make sense out of the concepts that they are putting together, right? And then also based on the concepts that they are putting together, what measures are they going to put in place to ensure that we are protecting uh, all assets and data and all that? So uh, there's the difference between the two now, uh, kind of similar, right? The idea behind it is kind of similar. So we are going to jump into design. Now we've looked at architecture design. So for Cybersecurity design, it is the actual implementation, right, of our cybersecurity, uh, like everything that we did in the architecture. So the architecture is a concept, the blueprint that we are going to lay out. So we will do this, we will do that, we connect this and that here. Now the actual doing of it, right, actual implementation of uh, the architectural concepts that we put together uh, is what we call the design. So for most of the answers that we got, they were right, you know, uh, on the path of what a design, a cybersecurity design is supposed to be, right? So design is a detailed planning, implementation of specific uh, security controls, uh, measures and controls within the framework established by the cybersecurity architecture, right? And if we go back two slides, we saw that one of the key components in cybersecurity architecture is to come up with a security framework the security framework uh, will be informed by so many uh, things, including uh, what our uh, assessment, security assessment, uh, our security policies, that is setting the boundaries for what we can do within security, uh, components that we have within our infrastructure. Uh, also looking at always people, processes, and technology, right, that we are going to be dealing with within the organization. And then we will also borrow from external frameworks or external standards is also going to help us to inform our strategic uh, security framework that we are going to use within the company. So for example, if your company is in the retail business, uh, they have to be in compliance with PCI and which are other uh, retail uh, frameworks on the financial side or even on the security side that they have to you know, stay in compliance with. Now for security, we know for you know retail companies accepting credit card and debit card, they have to stay in compliance with PCI. So PCI DSS is going to inform or will have an influence on your security, overall security framework for your company, right? If your company is working in the health sector and they are still accepting credit card and debit card, now you have HIPAA and PCI. If you are working in the government side and the federal agency uh, and they are in the health side and they also accepting credit card and debit card, then PCI, uh, RMF, FESMA, and the rest HIPAA, all those frameworks are going to be, you know, you, you are going to borrow from those to influence uh, your overall security framework that you are going to have for your company, right? So when it comes to the architecture uh, side of what we are doing, uh, you are not going to be doing things, uh, you know, in, in a vacuum. You are going to borrow from different concepts and then also for uh, frameworks, 
that are mandatory based on what your company is doing, you are going to borrow from those as well, or those are going to have an influence on what you do. So for the design, uh, we are actually uh, implementing uh, specific measures and controls within the framework that has been established in the architecture uh, side of what we did, right? So the goal of our cybersecurity design is to put into action the security measures and controls necessary to safeguard our organization's uh, IT infrastructure or anything uh, digital assets or data, right? Based on, so keyword still here, based on strategic uh, framework that we've set forth in the architecture process of what we did. Now, what are some of the key components when it comes to uh, design? So specific controls, uh, user authentication, data protection, incident response. So for specific controls, uh, in terms of what security uh, components or technologies that we are using, uh, firewall rule sets or like configuration of uh, security technologies, uh, our ACL list configuration, what type of encryption protocols are we using and the rest will all fall within your security uh, controls. Now authentication, uh, user authentication will fall under identity and access management like we looked at, I think like a week or two ago. Uh, so this is how we are going to authenticate users on our network uh, are we going to use one factor one factor authentication uh, dual factor authentication or multi factor authentication so it is all part of the implementation aspect of your architecture so but which is design now data protection how are we going to protect data uh, are we going to label data first into sensitive data you know uh, classified non classified and the rest and then how is the protection actually going to be are we going to encrypt data and how are we going to do the encryption Right, data in transit, data at rest, and data that is being used. And then how do we also prevent unauthorized access? Uh, so uh, one key aspect of design also data protection. Now, incident response uh, is also a very, plays a very vital role in this. Uh, for every organization, right, or in security, everybody's gonna get breached. It's just a matter of time, right? So it's just a matter of when. So what is gonna save you even when you get breached is, a robust incident response program uh, within the company that has been set up within the company, a functional, robust incident response program, right? So if you get breached and you have a good incident response program in place, the bridge will, uh, so look at it this way. If you get shot, right, or somebody, you know, shoots at you and you have a vest on, right, a bulletproof vest, uh, the impact is not going to be as grave if you didn't have anything on right so your bulletproof vest will kind of serve as your incident response program for your company uh if your bulletproof vest is out of date is not able to you know prevent bullets from entering your body then uh is of no use right you might have it everybody will see that you like you brought it like in the army for our uh, our uh, bullet press, uh, bulletproof vest that we wear, they are actually plates. There are plates in there that you can take out and put on, right? Sometimes when we are training, some people think it's too heavy, so they will take their plates out. And if you don't go close to them and touch them, you see them wearing their bulletproof vest, but then uh, there is no plate in it to catch any bullets, right? And if you train that way, when you're actually deployed and you are downrange, and you are moving around because you didn't train with the plates in there. Now you run into issues because you are not able to carry all your gear and everything that you like you have to carry with you, right? So all that I'm saying is your incident response program should be effective. You should be active, and uh, that is going to save your company when you get shot by malicious actors because you they are going to shoot at you. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So like, it's a matter of when they are going to shoot at you. So you have to be ready and prepared, right? To be able to take that, you know, uh, round and make it disappear. Like they didn't even shoot at you. So that forms a key role or like a key component in your cybersecurity design as well, incident response. Now for the two, cybersecurity architecture and design, like I said, uh, is a foundation for a comprehensive security strategy or security program for your company. Now, architecture, so this is kind of a summary. You know, cybersecurity architecture sets 
the strategic direction and it defines the overall security posture, uh, while design focuses on the practical implementation and configuration of security technologies and practices to achieve the desired level of protection against cyber threats. Right? So the major difference between the two, when we look at architecture, first, what should come to mind will be concepts, security concepts that we are going to put in place uh, for our strategic direction. So it's purely concepts. Uh, we are not implementing anything at that stage. It's just the drawing, the sketch uh, of, okay, this is what we think it's supposed to be. Now, for us to actually start putting everything together and implementing uh, the sketch that we did for our architecture, that is the design part, right? So the actual implementation of it is the design part, right? So for everybody who, you know, spoke on those lines, you were 100%, right? Now, a combination of both uh, your security architecture and design will help the organization to have a well-structured, uh, consistent and very effective uh, security program in place that is going to help the company uh, be on the safe side of security or be on the right side of security when attackers you know, come knocking, right? So that is a summary of you know, uh, your uh, cybersecurity architecture and design. Now we kept talking about strategic framework or strategic when it comes to design, uh, your cybersecurity architecture. So a strategic framework uh, for your company. I know in the industry, we throw around frameworks a lot, right? Uh, now framework in this context uh, is framework, right? Framework in other contexts referring to standards or standards that we also call frameworks like PCI, uh, HIPAA, FESMA, and the rest, right? Now, uh, when we talk about frameworks here, we are talking about you know, uh, the actual traditional concept of a framework, which also the framework that I just mentioned, kind of the idea uh, is on those lines. But when it comes to architecture, when we talk about strategic framework, we are looking at a high level blueprint uh, of how we are going to uh, come up with our concepts of how we are going to protect uh, our companies assets, digital assets, and also data effectively. And uh, your strategic fr framework will include policies, risk management, uh, strategies, and you know uh, allocation of resources and everything that we looked at uh, previously. But I just wanted to bring this on for everybody to have that. So if you are kind of uh, contemplating, but frameworks are you know, PCI, HIPAA, and, and, and the rest, right? Uh, so what framework are we referring to here? So this is framework that we are going to create ourselves as uh, security architects. So it's still going to be informed by other external frameworks like PCI, HIPAA, RMF, and the rest, if our company has to stay in compliance with those, right? So the framework here uh, is our roadmap for effective security, uh, cyber security planning and implementation. Right? So with that, we are going to move into Oh, Divine, uh, I'll give you the floor here shortly. So we are going to move into where cybersecurity architecture and design fits in the overall big picture, right? So when it comes to cybersecurity leadership roadmap, where are we going to place cybersecurity architecture and design? Mostly we will just say architecture, but design goes with it, right? So this is it right here. Uh, this was brought from SANS. Uh, so everything starts with governance, like I always say, right? If you are going from the top, everything starts with governance. Uh, we move into, so let's say your company has zero or even like the structure when it comes to items within the security space. Uh, looking at it from a leadership perspective, governance, and then we move into security uh, architecture. We move into security engineering. So somebody mentioned, I think it was Brian, uh, that after the design and everything is done, then engineering, we actually go into the building of it, which is the engineering part, right? And I think some some weeks ago, we talked about we, we were discussing the difference between architecture and engineering, cybersecurity architecture and engineering. And a lot of folks came up with some good insights. So for from architecture, we move into security engineering, right? Which is the building part of it. Architecture is the conceptual part and the design part. Uh, governance is the planning part. So everything starts with a plan, right? That is why I keep saying everything starts with governance. And as at the governance, stage that you are going to come up with your policies, your procedures, and all that, that will set the boundaries for everything that you are going to be doing. So if you don't start with governance, everything that you are going to do here is meaningless. 
because it's not bound, it's not guided by anything. You are just, it's like Dr. Edu start, you know, like you see me just stacking up my bricks and I say, I'm, I'm building, what are you building? Skyscraper or like a, like a one room or, I mean, how do I know I'm just stacking up bricks? That is because I didn't start with any plan. I just stacking it up. If it becomes a bridge or it becomes a house, I mean, I'm just building. Right. And you, like you don't want it for security is a is, is a serious matter. So we start with a plan. So that falls under governance. And, you know, under governance, we have within every company, uh, we have the overall business governance. You have your IT governance and then you have your security governance, cybersecurity or information security governance. Right. So IT and cybersecurity information security governance, they work together to help the to help us achieve the overall objective of our business governance. Right. So uh, that is also a different subject for a different day. Uh, so governance, security architecture, engineering is the building part of it. Now, security operations is the running part of it. Right. And then management and leadership is the leading part of what we do in security. So hopefully this also helps to make, you know, you see this helps to see the bigger picture. Hopefully. So we are going to move into uh, how to begin a career in uh, cybersecurity architecture, right? Uh, what do you need to work as a cybersecurity architect uh, and the likes? So there are different career paths within security that you can take to end up as a security architect. Uh, but we are going to look at some or one way or some of the ways that you can uh, get into this. Now, I think uh, Divine had a question we will, I will let you go divine and then we'll continue. Maybe it has to do with something that we looked at previously. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you, Doc. This is divine from Boston again. Um, so as, as uh, cyber security professionals, our objective is to make the architecture as robust as possible. And that usually attracts a lot of, a lot of resources, a lot of costs. Um, on the other hand, the management's objective is to cut costs as much as possible and to make profit as much as possible. So we are forced, we are facing opposing camps. How then do we uh, reconcile both without, from our perspective, um, compromising the quality of the security that we're trying to build? Okay, uh, thank you, Divine. So uh, maybe I'll open the floor for two people to give their take. And then I will chime in and we'll move forward. So Divine is asking that uh, within the company, there is limited resources, obviously. Uh, security, cyber security folks are, are uh, asking for resources. Uh, other areas of the company are asking for resources. The company's overall objective is to make profit. So they're also trying to, you know, cut off cost as much as possible. How do we go about this? I think the first hand up was Patrick. Uh, please go ahead, Patrick. Oh, yes, thank you, Doctor Du, for taking my uh, my uh, answer. Yes, um, I believe in this case. You know, uh, we've seen this in our regular job. You know, you we have to bring our understanding to the leadership. You know, um, I was working in um, the Safeway, and being on the ground as a cashier, I'm seeing things that the leadership can't see, and so there's something important i bring it to them and try to negotiate with them this is the importance of doing such and such like for say security we need a security guard because there's some thefts going on and at the end of the day we come to a compromise whether they want to add the additional security or if they don't want to add additional security they have made a decision and then the things that happen after that that's on them after that we just can only do our best you know like in the security example, we could just create our architecture based on what they give us. Anything that happens to that, I believe it's the leadership is the one, um, Dr. Edu, correct me if I'm wrong, that has to take the blame, not the people yes. who report to the leaders. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, Eliku, go ahead. Um, yeah, so most of the time, the a, a company that is interested in making sure that they actually spend the appropriate amount of uh, funds on security will look at will do some cost analysis 
because um, I think you gave an example. There's no need to guard like uh, an account of uh, $100 using technology of 5,000. So based on the cost and uh, the value of what's being protected, the company can make that decision in a way, in such a way that they are actually they have adequate security for the different assets that need to be protected. Okay, thank you, Eliku. Uh, Awini, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Doc. I I believe that um, in every organization um, there are certain things that you need to also learn in addition to the skill set you have that is issue selling and how to communicate with either top management or lower management. Um, in a case like this, you need to be, build a business case to justify why the company should spend money on the what you are putting across to management by bringing out the cost of um, the uh, architecture design or the cybersecurity design plan that you have, as well as building out the benefits and bringing the, the issues that are the problem within organizations to, and try to make, put quantities to write that is um, quantity in terms of costing it and the, the, the losses that may come in when the, there's a bleach. When you put all this together, supported with proper research and findings with evidence, you will be able to convince management that the business case to spend a, a certain amount of money on the quality of the case or on the qualities of the um, uh, information assets as well as the processes and its staff, it is very, very critical that uh, the, the, the spend that because of the importance that and the value that it brings to the organization. Every dollar spent must bring come in with a value to the organization. So at the end of the day, you should be able to even be able to quantify what we call the value management, that is end values management, which is mostly used in the DOD projects. And then when you are able to do that and carry your case across, you are likely to win the favors of management to implement the plan that you have designed, no matter the cost. If only there is money, they will go for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tunde, please go ahead. Thank you. Everybody has spoken very well, and I think they nailed it. What we do here is that we first do a risk assessment, right? What is the problem we have? And after we do that, we do an impact analysis. If, if something goes wrong, if a threat actually exploits a vulnerability, what is the impact? Is the impact going to be a high, low, or medium? That's why we do system categorization in um, list 800-53. So when we do that, a company doesn't have unlimited funds, right? The purpose of the company is to make a profit. It is the risk assessment, impact analysis that would determine the kind of security controls that we want to have. And I believe at the end of the day, we want to there is no total security, right? What we want to have is adequate security. And all the impact assessment risk analysis allows a company to be able to figure out where to take where to send their dollars. That is how we get the maximum spend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tunde. Uh Jamel, please go ahead. Yes, I think he kind of hit it when he said the adequate security. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm oversimplifying it, but it seemed like we would do um, uh, a priority analysis. We would prioritize what we definitely need, the company's goals, what we definitely need, and then try and get it at the correct, the best price we can, and then take it step by step. Well, what to get the most important, the bare essentials, what we need to make sure that we protect it at a decent price, and then we go to the next one, and they can add on later what they need and constant and continuous uh, to build a, the system that would be more robust. Yes, uh, great input. 
Thank you. Uh, Susanna, go ahead. I think um, I agree with the first person that spoke on the subject. Um, everything starts with governance. So whoever is in charge, they have a budget for what they want to do. You know, it's just a shift in the workforce. We used to do things with our hands physically. Now everything is going virtual. So it's the same concept that will go over there. So you can't, um, you have to comply with company policy. If you have a budget that goes above um, what they are willing to spend, that probably might be a problem. And as Tundi said, there can be total, um, uh, what do you call it? We, we don't have absolute security, but enough security to prevent a lot of things should be good enough. So whatever it is, if you work with a company, you work within their budget, you can your put forward your ideas. For the framework <laughs> that you have to build in order to be in compliance. And if you don't have enough money, Uh, please go ahead, Susan. Yeah, Susanna, uh, please go ahead. You're you're muted. Oh, you are muted again. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear okay. you. So I said, you can put forward your idea, you can put forward your budget, but under a company, it's all about governance and what they are willing to spend on what. So whatever it is, when it comes to their security issues, you will still have to comply. So if you have a budget that goes above and beyond, if they don't agree, you might have to cut down on your budget and find something that will work for them. I mean, in okay. the workforce, that's how we all manage it. All Great right. input. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Brian, okay. go ahead. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, most important thing, we know that companies love to make money, but also companies don't like to lose money. So most important thing is when, if you're in charge of uh, bringing leadership and stockholders new tools, um, it's also important to bring them case studies as well. Because when you come with them with a new tool and don't have any case studies and you don't have a reason why they should get it and you're excited about it and let's just say it could just do one or two more things and it, let's just say it costs them an extra $10,000 a year, they're thinking, okay, well, it does two more things and costs $10,000 a year. But if you go in with the, if you do your search on other companies that may have not had this tool and they had breaches or uh, uh, incidents that did happen. And you lead in with stories of, you know, this, when this company didn't have this in, this is how much money they lost. And I believe because of, you know, how hackers are on the rise, if we don't implement these tools, this is how much we could lose. Yes, it costs 10,000 more a year, but this could cost us in hundreds of thousands or millions uh, within that year. So the most important thing to go along with what everyone said, governance, risk management, and everything, lead in also with stories and case studies because facts are always going to tell, but the stories will sell uh, what it is that you're trying to do for the company. Yes. Uh, thank you, Brian. And uh, I can read me. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Dr. I think everybody has, has spoken uh, brilliantly. I just want to say that um, everything starts with governance and uh, the primary responsibility lies on the management to protect information assets. And, and I think that is the starting point. Of course, we know that there is no limited you know, budget as it were. They will need to allocate funds to where it's important. That is it. You know, the moment they know that if they don't protect the asset, the chances of even the, the, the going concern of the company is even threatened to start with. You know, all you just need to do, or all, all we need to do as a cyber 
security expert is to build a case study that will find a way to align you know, the IT objective with the business objective and what everybody has been saying in risk management, risk assessment, and the rest of that. You know, just make sure, you know, put forth your case to establish and um, convince management that if this is not done, this is, you know, this is the threat. And this is the risk, you know, the information asset of the company stands, you know, to be confronted with. They will find a way to allocate money to where it's very important, I, I believe. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and last, uh, Joe, please go ahead. Yeah, Doc, I think uh, my colleagues have spoken, and if we have spoken about uh, what needs to be done here, but I still will go with a risk impact and business impact analysis you know, so that the company will know where to prioritize uh, their resources. So this is what I would like to add. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. And great input from everyone. And I think piggybacking on uh, what Joe said and also Brian, uh, if you want to make a case for why your company should invest more in the security uh, aspect of your company or invest in the cybersecurity group. Uh, one thing that will help you is your uh, risk assessment and more so combining your qualitative and your quantitative, right? Uh, business owners and the C-suite and everybody in top management, uh, if you tell them, hey, if we don't do this, it can cost us $5 million or $50 million if we get breached, uh, everybody's going to turn their head to wherever, like whatever you are saying, if they were not paying attention. So now they, 5 million, what, <laughs> right? Uh, like, what did you say again? That will catch the attention. And that will be based on uh, the quantitative uh, uh, risk assessment that you did together with your, uh, with, with your with your quantitative together with your qualitative, right? And the qualitative showing uh, the level of risk, which is subjective, right? But uh, mostly you have to make a good case because although they they don't want to uh, lose money, and when they get breached, they lose more than money. Some you know, if you lose your reputation, you cannot buy that back with money, right? So if uh, you are the company who is notorious, like who is very uh, notorious uh, for the fact that you get breached almost at least like twice a year, people will think twice if they are dealing with you, right? And people are not going to take you that seriously. And then also, if you get breached, it's not your stocks, your goodwill, uh, money, uh, lawsuits. So you are going to lose way more than you are trying to save, right? So they are very much aware of it now. First, not so much, but you still have to make a good case. And then also, uh, business uh, analysis, uh, business analysis. Like how do they call it? Uh, uh, ROI. Business impact analysis. Analysis, yes. And return on yeah. investment. So like exactly. Eliku was saying, you are not going to spend a uh, million dollars preventing a risk that can cost the company $50,000 to prevent, right? So you are not, it has to make sense, right? So <clears throat> it's not because they want to be uh, safe. Now we are just coming at them with all sort of tools and you know, with just stacking up. I, I know one company, they have like five of every two. All right. So if it's like a vulnerability scanning tool, they have like three different versions of it. That is simply just waste of money. <laughs> right. And because these two folks, they will sell you on anything. Oh, even if you have this, I always have this extra thing that is going to, they are doing the same thing. Right. So uh, we have to, if we don't really also on the security side, if we don't, manage our resources well and we are just falling for any marketing you know gimmick from all these like security tool folks then when we really need the funds uh, management is going to look at us in a funny way right uh, but we have to be able to still make our case because everybody within the company is making their case for why they should be giving more money to you know invest in their uh in like whatever they are doing right so it's just a matter of and also like i think one uh, uh, of our colleagues said, overall, you present your case in terms of risk assessment and all that to them. And whatever decision they take is up to them because it's management 
or top management or you know like the c-suite that is going to determine the risk appetite of the company so if you tell them hey if this happens or this risk occurs if you don't put this in put in place these measures we are going to lose about 50 million dollars and they're like oh 50 million just 50 million okay then that's fine we're going to go with it it is up to them right we can only present to them uh, what our findings are and also our, our professional uh, view but for them to really invest or not and to take some measures or not will depend on uh, how much risk they are willing to take uh, and for us we are not going to be blamed for anything if your company gets bridged or somebody has to go to jail for a bridge it's none of the security professionals uh, except if you are in the c-suite so either CISO, cio and in those areas if you don't you know follow the prudent man rule uh, then you can end up having some uh, legal issues just like the ceo of uh uber not ceo CIA. i think CIA, he was C chief security officer of uber right he tried to cover a bridge up and that ended him being you know uh you know uh, sentenced uh in and being convicted right so uh, you don't want any of that Maybe you have to stay on the right side of security but overall it is management who is going to decide but we have to make a case because everybody is chasing the same resources within the company so now let's look at a career path that you can take if you want to focus on working in the security architecture side of the house now for educational foundation uh traditionally they will say if you have a degree in it a degree in cyber security or any of those areas but you don't necessarily need a degree in it or cyber security or you don't necessarily even need a degree right uh if you have a degree in anything it's fine if you don't it's also fine uh you will still be able to get into uh, security architecture uh as a career as a career path now cyber security knowledge uh in terms of certifications uh, mostly cissp cisa security plus all the certifications will help you uh the knowledge that comes from all those certifications will help you uh, in this space now for technical skills uh you have to have like we we saw when it talks about when we we looked at uh, architecture it's concepts right different concepts so you have to have a basic understanding and a deep understanding not just fundamental or just surface understanding deep understanding of core cyber security concepts and like i repeat deep understanding of core cyber security concepts and what are the core cyber security concepts right if i ask right here uh what are some of the core cyber security concepts a lot of us will be able to come up with some of it but can you really break it down in terms of uh using that to you know have a structure for an organization to follow in terms of a framework right so what is like what are we doing in security everything that we are doing like what is it all about what are we trying to achieve if you understand the the, the core concept from that angle you'll be able to work anywhere in security and especially in uh, architecture because architecture you are the one starting with the plan right you are starting with the plan for the whole entire building that we are going to build or the bridge that we are going to build so if your plan is flawed and you don't have like your understanding of mechanics your understanding of soil strength and i'm talking about buildings right understanding of soil strength understanding of uh strength of material in terms of your uh steel and like the rubbers that you're going to be using and if your understanding of those things are weak then what kind of plan are you going to come up with uh, in terms of actual architectural design right so for security you have to understand rigs what you know what are the fundamentals of rigs uh your cia prior uh how does that relate to rigs how does your cia trial triad relate to rigs and how do we enforce the cia triad you know what uh, items we have to look at when we are enforcing confidentiality integrity availability and how do we build from that so those are some of the key concepts and when it comes to confidentiality integrity availability uh, when it comes to the implementation or enforcement of it uh, in terms of network security what do we do access control what do we do cryptography what do we do right so you really have to 
have a very good working knowledge in cybersecurity to be able to function in this area because you are the one who is going to do the design, architectural like design for everything. So you should understand all areas. You don't necessarily have to be an expert in all areas, but you should have a very deep and good understanding of uh, the core concepts, including network security, access control, cryptography, intrusion detection, intrusion uh, in incident response, and the rest, right? And then also you need to uh, school yourself when it comes to cybersecurity technologies and tools, right? Such as uh, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and preparation systems, and other security tools that are out there, right? So for the technical aspect of it, uh, that is what you should be looking at. Now for networking skills, uh, you should have a good working knowledge in networking, right? Networking protocols, uh, architectures, and then also uh, te technologies, uh, net, and then uh, that will help because if your company, and so this is for on-site now uh, or on, on prem right on on prem if your company is in the cloud now everything is in the cloud then you have to also understand uh how to go about you know uh, cloud security in terms of the the design of it right architectural design of it right so having a good understanding of the cloud is also going to help you here as well now programming and scripting some level of programming and scripting is needed to be able to function well in the architectural space if you don't know any programming and uh, maybe need programming language, you'll still be able to function. But at a certain level, uh, you are going to need some programming. Uh, but now, uh, because of AI, like chat GPT, you'll be able to get away without, you know, really knowing, uh, being maybe a 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 for Python or Bash or any of these programming languages, uh, because it will literally, if you tell it what you want, it will literally write all the code for you or like the, it will just come up with a script you can just copy and paste and even ask it how to use it or how do i you know really input into this you know situation and get the results that i'm looking for right so uh, that is not also to say you don't really need to know some programming or how to move uh within so if you know some if you have a very good fundamental uh, knowledge now with the help of ai you'll be able to function you don't have to be a programming guru Right, but programming will help you when it comes to, you know, doing automation, you know, quick automation and uh, customizing some security solutions. Programming will help you as a security uh, architect. Now, soft skills, key, right? Soft skills, developing, uh, having a good, strong communication skills, problem solving, which is key, right? Because you are going to be communicating with different groups, different stakeholders. Uh, breaking down complex security concepts to non-technical stakeholders and collaborating with diverse groups, right? So we have to, uh, you have to develop your soft skills and soft skills can be from anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be from uh, cybersecurity, right? If you, anywhere that you've worked, the schools that you went to, churches, the soft skills that you've built over time, right, in life uh, is very transferable here. So that is why I keep telling everybody, you have some of the skills needed already in security. Uh, maybe you just don't know because soft skills, they play a very vital role here. Now, once we're done with this, we are going to look at a natural job post for a cybersecurity architect's position, three of them, right? And then uh, we are going to open the floor for everybody to you know, chime in. And for also to make yourself more marketable, you have to prove or you have to show that you've worked on certain projects or some projects uh in the cybersecurity architect uh, area right so you can create a portfolio showcasing projects that you've worked on security solutions uh, that you've contributed to or uh, contribution to cybersecurity initiatives uh, all those will help when you're applying for uh, jobs now not only for cybersecurity architect uh, positions but for all other positions uh if you are able to come up with a list of projects that you've worked on aside your resume uh it will also help you and it will go a long way because now your potential employer knows exactly a project you've worked on and what you can do right. so with that we are going to move into the 20 percent for anybody who wants to write uh any of the comtia security uh any of the comtia 
uh, security certifications, right? Because we are community partners, Arithmis Academy is a community partner, uh, authorized partner. So we have 20% discount that we give to everybody. Uh, there is no, and when we sell the vouchers, we don't get anything, uh, zero. We don't get anything. What we get is a 20% and we give that to you, right? So uh, there is no catch to that. Now we have a WhatsApp group. We are going to post the link in the chat and uh, our YouTube channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can link and then also spread the word. Uh, if you have anybody interested in cybersecurity, you can send them the link for them to watch previous cyber chat like we are, we, we are having here. Uh, we are almost 140 uh, tonight. I appreciate everybody's time. And for folks who were not able to join, we can still share the link uh, to those folks. And we are also offering the 20 the 40% uh, discount for October Cyber Security Awareness Month and PCI uh, new class is starting on on Monday. All the information will be sent to uh, all our PCI folks uh, who are in this new cohort. And then also for our winners who will be awarded PCI, you are going to get the follow up information uh, as well, right? And we will move into our internship that is also coming up. And for everybody on here, if you've not already taken, if you are new to cyber security and you're not taking our cyber security uh, for beginners course, please do so. If you go to arithmisacademy.com, we have uh, two free courses on the PC, uh, cyber security for beginners and PCI for beginners that you can take uh, to get a better understanding of the security uh, field and what it entails, right? So, and for if you are trying to get into cyber security, our cyber security entry level course is the right path for you to take. And that includes internship, hands-on training, job placement assistance, and the rest. Then also we have cyber uh, the PCI uh, course that we also offer, mostly for uh, IT folks who have already been in IT, or if you've, you've started something in security, probably you have like security plus and the rest, you can also join uh, that cohort also as well. Now we are going to move into uh, the internship portion of this now for in, interns, we started a new workshop internship, uh, internship uh, on the 28th, which is next week, Saturday. Uh, so that 40% still applies to this. If you want to take part in it, you are going to be working on real world cyber security projects for two of our sister companies. And you get to go through incident response, uh, doing audits on a company to see their security posture and all that, right? So uh, very interesting uh, cohorts that we've had and they've also learned a lot right now uh so we went through that for financing we have different payment options uh, you can do in-house payments you can finance through meritize do income sharing and the rest all of that is on our website right and these are our contacts so we are going to look at the job postings and then we will wrap up for tonight open the floor for everybody to be able to also share and then we are announce we will announce our winners so uh whilst we are bringing that up I know there are some hands up. Tunde, please go ahead. And then we will, uh, next person will be Prince and then Divine. Please go ahead. Okay. That's a cool question. Um, do you think it makes sense for people on this group, anyone that is interested, to take the certified in cybersecurity by ISC squared? I saw that it's a, I, I, I think for now, there's a voucher that people can take it for free. What do you think about that? Yeah, so yes, uh, try your hands on it. There is nothing like too much learning if you want to be in uh, the security space and you should grab as much knowledge and skill from anywhere else that you can get your hands on, right? So I encourage everybody uh, for when they, so they are still in the pilot phase. Uh, so try your hands on it, right? Take the, like the training and take the exam, right? And make sure you pass. Uh, just pay attention to it will give you some good foundation. So yes, uh, you can go ahead and take that. Now, Prince, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Doctor. My question, real quick, on the forty percent discount, uh, is it applicable to the payment plans as well? Uh, so that applies to only uh, one-time payments. Okay, but there is a trick to that, right? Uh, you can pay through a firm. On our website and our firm, you pay instrumental payments to our firm. But you still get the 40% discount, right? Yes. So our firm will pay, to, like you are going to pay with a 40% discount 
So a pair will pay like a firm will pay out front for you, and then you pay a firm instrumental payment. Okay, good. That's that's what I wanted to know. All right. Yes. So that is a way around it. But in-house installment payments doesn't apply to uh the the 40% doesn't apply. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Divine. Uh, thank you, Doc. For uh, my question relates to your previous uh, discourse on uh, the cybersecurity architecture career. So for that mm -hmm. career path in particular, uh, what are the levels of uh, what are the levels in the ladder of for that career path? Say, for example, if you're getting into architecture and want to build a career in it, what is the entry level? What is the uh, mid level? What is the senior level for for cybersecurity architecture in particular? Oh, so for cybersecurity architecture uh, level will be so you and before I get into that, so there are feeder roles, right? Feeder roles that can feed you into a cybersecurity architecture. Now, uh, any security role you can jump from there into like any of the entry level roles you can jump from there uh, onto uh the architecture now architecture mostly you start off as uh, security architecture cyber security architecture and then they have senior cyber security architecture right mostly those are like the common ones that you see so that with a senior obviously you are going to be in a leadership managerial role so you're going to be managing people but then also you are going to be dealing more with uh, top management right with the normal architecture role it can be cyber and also for the they have some junior roles as well, right? So cybersecurity architecture junior, uh, you are going to be mostly entry level roles, and then uh, yes, architecture as uh, cybersecurity architect will be uh, intermediate kind of you know, uh, and then your senior will be uh, advanced level, right? So those are the layers or like the like the different roles in the hierarchy, uh, but aside that. Really, there is nothing really else. Everything, unless of course, maybe they have you do analyst, but then you are doing, like they have you in there as an analyst, but you are doing a cybersecurity architect role, right? You are functioning as an architect, right? Uh, so hopefully that helps. Thank you, Ido. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Efusa. Oh, hopefully I got your name right. Sorry if I, I made your name. Uh, good evening, uh, Doctor. Good evening. Yeah, uh, this is the uh, first time I'm joining this class, and uh, I really learned a lot from it. So I see you talked about the uh, internship program. So uh, mm -hmm. I was just going to ask how to take part in that. Oh, so you can uh, enroll. If you go to our website, you can uh, enroll on there, and you will receive all the information to join. For the internship. So on our website, you see, yes, you see cyber. If you go to arithmetacademy.com, you see cyber security uh, workshop slash internship, and you can enroll there. Okay. Then uh, one more question. I had one of our brother talk about uh, free exam, free voucher to take the uh, ISC square exam. So yes, uh, is that also so found think, on the website? No, not not from us. Uh, that is from ISC square. So if you go to um, ISC square's website. Yeah, you'll be able to see it. But if, uh, like, Tunde want to speak more about that. I posted I think, was it the information on the chat. So, okay, the, thank you. The link is there. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and Joe, please go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, sorry, Doc. That was a previous... Uh... Oh, that was okay. Response. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think George, uh, go ahead, George. Yes, Doctor, I do. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know that the cybersecurity in ISC2, this um I did that one. So it's just training. You register on the ISC2 website. Once you finish the training, then they give you the voucher and then you go to um uh yeah website to register for the exams and put in the 
Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, so that was George. Uh, but you are coming in broken. Hopefully, George was able to say everything that he wanted to say. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share screen here. But before that, I'm going to put in the the like the, the link for the WhatsApp group. Yes, Doug, I have a question. I'm not able to raise my hand, but I'm driving. Oh, okay. Please go ahead. Yes, Doug. Um, uh, my question is about the, the internship. So is this internship um beneficial to somebody who has um who has who don't have any um skill in cybersecurity? Or okay, so people who have the basic uh, knowledge or people who are already into the program. Yeah, so if you have zero uh like you are starting from scratch then we encourage you to go through our cyber security entry level course first okay. which also includes the internship right so the whatsapp invite has been posted in there if you are not part of the group please go ahead and uh, you can use that to join but make sure uh you are setting up your two-factor authentication on your whatsapp so let's look at an example of uh, an architect gig So right here, uh, I pulled this from DICE. Uh, so from DICE, they have, uh, this is a cyber security architect uh, for Antilly Consulting. Now the job description, uh, so Kwabina, I'll get to you here shortly. So job description is right here. Uh, this is about, they mostly they'll speak about the company and what the position is going to be about and all that. So the role will be to analyze. Okay, well, let's jump straight into the key areas of responsibility. So we are, I'm just going to just brush through some of it. Uh, so focus on defining services, uh, evaluate, propose, assistant, if we can, okay, acquire. Uh, I'm going to also post this link for everybody to take a look at here shortly. Communicate and train the team to change to on um, changes in technologies, procedures, solution, uh, implementation, and approaches. Develop training material for team members to use with client audience, promote culture of knowledge sharing and collaborate. Okay, so uh, act, act as a resource to solution architects for advice and recommendation on service projects, on services uh, as well. And then a very uh, talk on the technical side. Right, focus on defining security. Okay, so mostly oh, the first uh, existing security hardware and software engagements. Blah, blah. So there are some technical uh, elements here and there, uh, but for the training and collaborating and mentoring and coaching, all those are soft skills. So if you have them coming in from you know any other field, uh, that works here. Now required qualifications, we can go down the list. Now you know if I keep telling you all, like I keep talking about soft skills. You know, uh, if you go come down here, see strong oral communication skills, uh, strong passion for learning and teaching others, uh, motivated and self-starting, ability to think creatively and come up with pro uh, proactive ideas, uh, must be able to communicate effectively and in a constructive manner with management, peers and co-workers. Uh, before that was strong interpersonal and presentation skills, including consultant skills. Ability to adopt to change and business needs, ability to execute uh, territorial goals and metrics, knowledge and proving success in engaging and working with sales team, uh, proving success in. So, this is like predominantly mainly. Uh, Recording in progress. All right. So, there was some uh, background noise on there. So this, like this particular job posting, uh, although is architect, uh, is very heavy on soft skills, right? So, and also from the amount that is on here, uh, I can tell this is more of uh, intermediate advanced because as you can see here, there's a lot of management leadership twist to this, 
right? So although they didn't add senior, I think this will be a senior. Be a senior. And, and you can apply, you can for, apply a for a senior. Uh, and somebody keeps unmuting themselves. You can apply for a senior role. So uh, you might be thinking, but maybe I'm new to security. I just did my course. I've done internship and the rest. I'm new to security. You are new to security, but you are not new to the management of people. You are. You might not be new to teaching and mentoring people, right? So now you have the security aspect of it. Uh, you can move around in security. You have a good working knowledge in security. You can add that to the management and leadership uh, skill set that you have already and still be able to assume a managerial role in security and be able to function. So it's not just me saying it. Uh, if you're on here and you have most of the skill sets that are being required here and mostly everything that they do in terms of key areas of responsibility, no, in terms of uh, required qualifications, it's just skill. All, all, all of them are almost... So, uh, that is not to say you will find other cybersecurity architect roles that are very technical. Now, this is one. Let's look at another one here, still from DICE. And this, the pay is 140 to 190. So this, I suspect, is kind of a uh, cybersecurity architect senior also as well. Now for this, so the details, I think like this is one of the shortest job descriptions that I've seen. Uh, so job details, four years of information. Yeah, so this is not even that senior. Four years plus, uh, four years plus can be, uh, okay, so four years plus of information security experience in designing, deploying, managing, monitoring, and evaluating advanced security solutions. So that is uh, technical. Right? Uh, now, extensive knowledge of security architecture technology solutions. Ability to access security incidents or risks, gather information, needed information, and find appropriate solutions. Uh, experience and expertise in AD and email security, uh, experience, experienced enterprise security subject matter expert, communicate complex technical and risk uh, topics to non-technical audience. Uh, this is a soft skill, right? Although you have to understand the, 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 the technical aspect to be able to break it down to explain to non-technical people, but uh, the ability or the law, the skill to do that is a, is a soft skill, right? Uh, so this is a very short, straight to the point uh, job description, but it's kind of loaded. If you break it down into design deployment, so what is your experience in that? Uh, what is your experience in uh, security, architecture, technology solutions, and all that, right? But this is also very doable uh, if you have a good working knowledge in security. So we are going to look at the last one, and then we open the floor for... I think we look, no, we didn't look at this one. Right. So let's look at this one. This will be the last one. And so at least you see, you know how and where to find some of the uh, security architects. So for this, you are responsible for security architecture across a variety of applications or domains uh, to include cloud computing assigned to uh, project initiative, project slash initiatives of large size, complex. A complexity and risks. Uh, cyber security engineer develops actionable security uh, blueprints, uh, principles, models, designs, standards, and guidelines to ensure that enterprise information technology architecture and support is consistent, uh, usable, secure, and add value to the business. Right. And then down here, uh, your job is we can. Cybersecurity development and cybersecurity policy analysis. Uh, develop information assurance process processes utilizing most up to date technology uh, in industry best practices. Uh, and the list goes from technical business processes and the status to review meetings. And the list goes on. This is uh, more kind of a mixture what to expect uh, as, as a security architect. And also for certification, security plus, 
Uh, they have CISA, they have certified pen testing or ECH from any of those will be enough. And a degree in related disciplines. So related disciplines can be business or it can be IT. Uh, if you don't have any of in those areas, that is fine. Uh, that is still not going to be something that will prevent you from getting a job. And then seven years of professional related or uh, masters in this area. Okay. So this is also an example of a job description uh, for security architects. Now there are some hands raised. We are going to uh, listen to them real quick. And go ahead, uh, Leonard, and then Kwabina and Divine. All right, Dr. G. Uh, please, my question is, it's in so it's it's in regards to the internship and work uh, in the workshop. Please, is it uh, is it what do you call it? Is it a live or is it a recorded um, um, something? You know. Now we meet on Saturday mornings and we discuss the projects or we look at the projects that we are going to work on. Discuss the science behind it and how we are going to do it, and then the groups will work on it during the week. So it's it's live. We meet live for two months. Sometimes a little bit over two months. Yes, it's not recorded. All right, great. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Leonard, please go ahead. Yes, I have a question about the Security Plus exam. I signed up for the CompTIA A Plus exam one last year sometime, and I've kept postponing the test date. Mm -hmm. And I got into cybersecurity earlier this year because I had some IT background. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to change my exam to Security Plus from A Plus? Is that allowed? Or do I have to take the A Plus because I've already paid for it? Yeah. So, like, for from what I know from Comtia, if you buy the mm -hmm. voucher, one is not transferable. Mm -hmm. Unless it was bought through, like, if we buy it for you, we can give it to anybody. Right? Okay. Because, like, like your name is not attached to it. Now, if we bought a Security Plus uh, voucher for you, we cannot upgrade it to Security Analyst or downgrade it to. So, like, once you buy it for that particular uh, certification, then you have to write it. And yeah, mostly, I... it is valid for a year. So, I'm not sure if your year is up. Just no, not that. quite. It's coming up though. So I'll have to sit for the exam, the core one of A plus. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, so gee. I mean, uh, just but I think like with your background already in IT and what like we've been going through, uh, in your training, like that mm -hmm. shouldn't be much of a headache, right? All you need is just some yeah. practice test to be able to at least see how the questions are set up, and you should be good to go. Okay. And um, the Google Classroom, you mentioned something about the policy and procedures template for the February 2023 cohort. Mm -hmm. Is that in the Google Classroom? Yes. Okay. And my last question, it's a yes or no, basically. Security clearance. Mm -hmm. There have been jobs that have asked for security clearance for whether or not I've had it. Is that only for working for the DOD? Yes. Okay. Is that something that we should get or? No, so you it... can't get security clearance on your own as an mm -hmm. individual, right? So uh, mostly if a company, like a company can bring you on and then they will apply for the security clearance on your behalf, right? Okay. Because even in the military, it's not everybody who has security clearance. When you are joining, they will start the process, but they will not go all the way through and give you the clearance unless you you like what you are going to do as your work in the military demands that you have security clearance. Okay. Right. Yes. So uh, if you have to be an officer, like every officer has to have at least security clearance. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, if you are enlisted, you're, you know, on the enlisted side, it's not everybody who needs to have security clearance. So even you can join the army for 20 years and still not have security clearance. Or join okay. the navy, or join. So, for security clearance, is not something that an individual can apply for, right? So, it has to be through 
the company that has won the contracts and is working for DOD or for the federal government, or uh, you have to be through like the military. Right. It's kind of like being a QSA. You have to work for a QSA company to be a QSA. Yes. You cannot be one on your own. Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Divine, please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Divine, again from Boston. Um, my question is, relate, is in relation to the last discourse you had on uh, the cybersecurity architecture profession. Uh, without, mm -hmm. without wanting to take you back again, uh, for a newbie like myself, or for someone joining the Arrhythmus family uh, newly, how does your, how does the Arrhythmus program, the Arrhythmus package, how does it prepare a newbie for his first job? That is, what are the elements involved in uh, your package which will prepare a student for the first job, given, uh, given the fact that, uh, like you discussed, it involves uh, a great deal of technical knowledge, some managerial skills, some coding skills, and so on. So how how does a readmiss uh, package prepare a newbie like myself for his first role, someone who is interested in uh, that area after listening to you? Okay, so for uh, if you are absolutely new, uh, our cybersecurity entry-level course uh, is the right option. And it is, it is going to give you a very solid background in cybersecurity and then also not just knowledge, uh, but then we will move you into the doing portion of it. That is the hands-on training and then also the internship, right? Where you actually now start to make sense of what you've been studying, right? So that uh, will make you all rounded and you'll be able to fit in any role as an architect. Now, uh, for the managerial roles, you can still, uh, depending on what you've been doing previously, you know, uh, for work, if you you have experience in managerial roles, in leadership roles, uh, you can apply what we are giving you together with your leadership managerial and position yourself to take on leadership managerial roles because managing people uh, is the same everywhere. Now, uh, that because of that, that is why we can move the CEO of uh, Ford, become the CEO of Coca-Cola, and the companies are still going to function. Right. Uh, he only knows about cars, not soft drink, not drinks. It is the principle behind managing people. So if you know that and you get the activity knowledge for that industry, you are golden. Right. So our entry level will prepare you for uh, almost all roles on the blue side of the house. So security architects, third party risk management, name it, uh, because it is it encompasses everything. Right. We take you through everything, the networking, architecture. So the, you have a very good working knowledge in all areas. And then also for the skills portion, we expose you to some of the tools, most of the popular tools. And then for the doing portion, which is the polishing up your skills, uh, the internship will help you to really, you know, uh, polish up your skills and also to really have a better understanding of uh, where you stand in terms of security from different hierarchies uh, in the organizational uh, chain of command. Right, so the projects that we do for the internship, some of it will be actually uh, on the job will be done by your CISO, right? Some of it, your CIO, or your uh, security manager, but you'll be in those seats, those positions going back and forth. And then you are also on the ground again and doing the actual work, right? So you get to have that exposure and you are going to be in groups. So if you are lucky and you find yourself in a leadership managerial role, you're also polishing up your leadership managerial skills and you are you are going to be in a virtual group and being in a virtual group is is more difficult or managing people in a virtual setup is more difficult than in real life right so we give you all those soft skills we try to give you all those soft skills as well you there's going to be a lot of presentations uh, during our meetings so if maybe you did you, you and your group yes conducted a risk assessment for your company you are going to present it in class uh what items that you identify to be gaps and what is your strategy moving into it and you have to if you work on third party risk management you are going to present your findings for the two or three companies that were shortlisted uh, why we should go with company a not b uh, based on their security posture and you're going to you know argue for it so just like how i think it was divine who was asking uh if companies are struggling we are we have like limited resources everybody is struggling to get the same resources how are you going to, you know, position yourself to get more for your security team? Uh, if you like, you go through this. We are training you to actually 
uh, go through how to pitch based on facts, you know, how to pitch for fans, for items that you might need for like the security or uh, which direction they should go in terms of security, uh, all based on facts and research that you are going to be doing uh, during the internship. So the internship hands down will prepare you for uh, any security uh, architect role. Thank you, Doc. Yes, you're welcome. And uh, Olimju, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm from uh, your junior church program. Just wanted to ask quick here are we having uh, uh, graduation tomorrow? And is it uh, going to be held at 9 a.m. Eastern or 10 a.m. Eastern? Thank you. No, graduation is going to be next, not this weekend, but ne not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Uh, tomorrow we are wrapping up on uh, automated tools. And then I think one more item and then job placement, start the ball rolling on job placement assistance. And is it going to be held on, on, on 9 a.m. Eastern, right? Not the 10 a.m. No, that is going to be 10. Uh, for, no, for your, for your cohort, it's going to be 11. That in the, uh, about the time, I'm asking the 11 a.m. Eastern standard? Yes, Eastern, oh. like all the times are Eastern. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, not 10 a.m. Eastern yeah. Standard. So I'm calling from you in, from Minnesota. Yes, 11 a.m. It will be 11 a.m. Okay, by my yes. time. Yes. All right. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Kazim, please go ahead and ask your question. Yes, uh, good evening. Um, just want to know, I'm into uh, PCI DSS. Uh, I just want to know when will I start or when, when will that class start? Thank you. Oh, we are starting on Monday. So you, you are going to receive like a follow-up email with a Zoom link. Okay. Uh, by Saturday. Okay. Yes. All right, then. Thank, thank you. That's all I want to know. Uh, Arini, please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to... I'll give information to those who are thinking of joining the, the internship program. I joined the internship program. The course is not over. I got the opportunity for a job interview and I've been moved to the second round. So, and the position was purely uh, IT audit and then uh, uh, GRC. So I'm encouraging you, if you are having some doubts, the internship program is really good. And that was my first cybersecurity interview in my life. Unfortunately, I've been shortlisted for the second round of the interview. Hopefully, I'm going to make it with this internship program. Thank you. So don't, don't be doubtful at all. Just go all in. Be ready to learn, be ready to make your hands dirty, contribute, do research, learn the things that they will give to you. Don't look for the shortcuts to make to just satisfy the presentation and the class at the end of the week, but really learn the materials and then you, you get the opportunity. What I did in my, my, my resume was to just summarize all the course outline that we the Dr. Edu took us through for the two months, and then they, they summarized it and pre, uh, did it in a resume form and added it to my resume. And that is how I got the interview. That was my first interview. I was scared, but uh, with the coaching from Dr. Edu, I was able to go to this. I'm now at the second round, which is coming on very soon. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you and good luck, uh, hopefully. Please go ahead and we will wrap up for tonight. Hello. Yes, go ahead, George. Yes, so to add to what uh, he also said, I also got a job um, for the PCI too. I mean, uh, so his class works. I did the internship and then I did a PCI. Now I got a PCI job. So. I want to encourage everybody that it works. All right, George. 
Uh, thank you very much. So we are wrapping up for tonight. Uh, our winners for tonight. First is KGA. And so that is like the name on there, KG and Divine. I think I got that right. Uh, so please, you know, to David at Arithmetic, uh, let him know you are a winner for tonight's uh, cyber charts for right and uh, category for tonight. Uh, still, we are using uh, the LLE show and then also for participation, right? So we are combining both and uh, Divine and KG. Uh, KG was, I think he was like an hour early or something. So uh, those are And I mean, for the early show, you are always going to, you know, have that chance of, you know, using early show to win. Uh, so just be on the loop. Next week is going to be the last week. Uh, the last scholarship is just one left, but we're probably still going to do two. Right. So I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. We will meet again next week. God willing, same time for Cyber Chat. And uh, please spread the word. Uh, and, you know, let's join the WhatsApp group if you are not already on there. And anything Cyber Security uh, advancement, uh, please reach out for help. You know, we are there to help uh, talk to you and make sure you are on the right path. So have a great weekend, everyone. We will meet again next week for Cyber Chat. Thank you, Dr. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Boston.